What's up everyone, Adam Frader here, another video where I'm going to help you get shredded. Today, we're focusing on the chest. Obviously, we're going to tie in some core because we got to get those ab gains, but we're going to work on our chest. We're going to do body weight calisthenics exercises meant to build up the chest. If you follow this workout, you will not only build size, but you can build definition. You'll burn those calories. You'll get stronger. You'll get more explosive all that good stuff. You don't wanna hear me talk anymore. You wanna dive into the workout, so let's do it. We're starting this workout after warming up, so go warm up. We're starting this workout with 100 push-ups. Might sound daunting, might be easier for some, harder for others, but the reason we're doing this is because we're gonna time it. So if you time how long it takes you to do 100 push-ups, as many sets and reps as needed, you can rest as much as you need, but time yourself, now you have a marker, you have a starting point. So in another week, you can time yourself doing 100 push-ups, and in another month, you can see it again, and you can see your progress, but you also have always heard that you need to compete against yourself to be the best version of yourself. So how better to compete against yourself by then to say, ooh, last week, I did 100 push-ups in seven minutes, this week, I need to beat seven minutes. So as that clock is ticking, you're competing, you're fighting against yourself so you can be better. Let's start off with 100 push-ups. I'm gonna get my phone out, I'm gonna get my timer going, and we're gonna get after it. My only tip is don't kill yourself in the first set by going too hard. Pace yourself because you will tire out quickly if you're not used to this. And if you're really, really not good at push-ups, guys, no worries, you're gonna get better. Maybe start with 50 or drop your knees and you can do modified push-ups. Let's get after it. All right, so again, I'm gonna try to help you guys through this first set, 25. I stick with that pace, and I give myself like a 30 second rest, in a few minutes I'll crank through 100. Most important, make sure you don't cheat on form. You never cheat on form. You're doing 100 good form push-ups. Get that chest down to the ground, drive through your shoulders. I don't wanna see any of the pushing like this. That's not a push-up. I don't wanna see anything like this, not a push-up. Good form only. Let's rest, dive back in. Already got 25 down, and it's been one minute. That's 50, we're halfway down, basically a minute and a half in. Rest, we'll dive back in. Again guys, good form only. And we're doing this, we're competing against ourselves. Now, this is the first time I'm doing this, and I think I'm setting this up for you. My programs, I do a lot of different types of workouts where you set a timer to see how many times you can either complete a round of workouts or an exercise. And then a few weeks later, you come back to that exercise or that exact same circuit and you can compare. And you always see your time getting less or you always see your reps going up because my programs work. Check it out, link in bio. Whew. And that's 100. Looks like I'm uh, just over four and a half minutes. Not bad. So I'm gonna record this time in my notes, and the next time I do this challenge, I'm gonna come back to it, and I'm gonna make sure I push myself, and I'm better than the guy that I am right now. And the guy that I am right now is thinking about future me, and he's like, nah, you ain't gonna beat me, dog. But he is, because he's gonna be better, because he's older, he's wiser, and he knows. We just did 100 push-ups normal. That's just your warm-up. Wait a few minutes, and we're gonna dive into inverted push-ups. You're gonna be at a decline. So you're gonna put your feet up on the couch, Obviously, the higher you put them, the more weight that's on your hands, so it's gonna be more difficult, the lower, the easier. Set that according to your level. Now, what happens when you put your feet up is, instead of just pushing flat, you're now pushing a little bit more like this. In the weightlifting world, we know that an incline bench press works more of the upper chest. So that's what we're gonna be targeting with this movement. It's a little bit more of an incline movement this way, even though we're declining our bodies. If you wanna make this harder, you can put your hands on two yoga blocks so that you can go even deeper into the position. I'm gonna start on the low part of the couch. Now, what I don't wanna see is hands in front of your head where you bring your head down like this. 
Hands are under your shoulders. It might seem weird to have your weight over your shoulders like this, but you're bringing it to your lower chest. We're not bringing it to here, we're bringing it down. Almost like our nipples, our chest comes right between our hands. Don't arch, you wanna keep a nice flat back, so you come to here. Now, if your face is getting in the way and you wanna go deeper, again, you can elevate the hands. So what we're gonna do with this exercise is you're gonna do four sets and you're gonna push yourself. So for set number one, I want you to go almost to failure, a few reps short of failure. Set number two, few reps short of failure. Set three, to failure. And again, failure is with good form. Set four, to failure again. Now, you can rest for 30 to 60 seconds between each set, or you can target your core between every set. Now, when you target your core, what you're not realizing when you're doing this decline push-up is that your primary muscle is your pec. So all you're thinking about is your chest. The secondary muscle is even your tricep, so you're thinking about that. But at the whole time, your core is stabilizing your entire body. So if you train your core in between, you're gonna feel your core burning more when you're doing those sets. So just a suggestion, totally up to you. But in between, you can do what I call rope climbers. Maybe about 30 reps of rope climbers. You're on your back, feet are up, you reach up for that invisible rope, you grab it, and you do 30 rope climbing movements. It's really just a crunch, but you're really reaching up and extending, and obviously climbing the rope is fun. So, four sets of that with the abs in between to superset, we move on to the next exercise. All right, okay. exercise number two, we are going to be doing dips. Now, I usually call dips hollow dips. Why? Because most people that I see doing dips are using just their triceps. They're almost looking up and pushing themselves like this because they have more strength, at least they believe they do in their triceps. And what you're doing is you're opening up your chest so you're not really using your chest or your shoulders, you're just using your triceps. The movement is more difficult. And when we're working out, we don't wanna make movements easier by cheating form. We actually want to make them more difficult because the goal of working out is to be challenged it's how you grow your body. So a more challenging dip is to hollow the body. You want your spine more like this, like how you would look if you were sad. When you're sad, you're like this. When you're happy, you're like this. It's the opposite. Working out makes us happy, but we wanna be sad. So we're gonna hollow. I'm gonna push my shoulders away from my ears. And from here, instead of pushing my chest up, I'm gonna push through this part of my back as if this is the part that I wanna rise up. Now what that's doing is because my chest isn't open, I have to use my pecs to keep my shoulders protracted. I have to use my front delts. And what I'm using is my core to keep my spine sucked in and stabilized. If you think about a chest fly that uses your chest, if you do a chest fly like this, that's one way to do it, but it's way harder. If you close your body, think of the range of motion that you're getting there. So we're going for a deeper stretch in the chest. Again, if my shoulders are like this, my pec doesn't have to do much. If my shoulders are like this, now my pec opens up as I go low and contracts as I come up. So you're gonna be doing four sets of these. Just like the last exercise, the first two sets, you're gonna be a couple reps short of failure. I call this 90% maximum effort. The second two sets, you're going to failure. Push yourself. Failure with good form. When you get tired, I don't wanna see jerking motion at all. Never. Even just that, I can even replay this in that video to see what my facial expression is like. You don't wanna look like that. I don't wanna look like that. I'm just doing it for you guys. So four sets of those. In between, again, you can add abs. So what we're gonna do for abs, and the reason I'm using these stools is because I'm showing you, you can do this at home, but you can, if you have parallel bars or you have access to a gym, feel free obviously to use that. What we're gonna do for abs for this next one is, again, you can do this on these two chairs. These bar stools have to be great for this, but we're gonna do some flutter kicks. Sit here, fluttering those abs for 20, 30 reps. If that's hard, you can do it with your knees like this. 
shoulders away from the ears. Nice, strong, locked elbows. Try instead of having your triceps out here to wrap them and bring your biceps forward and do the movement. So that is exercise. Dose. Let's move on to the next one. All right, wide fingertip push-ups. So I'm gonna break down why fingertips changes this movement. If I'm going wide push-ups from here, my range of motion is obviously seen. If I go on my fingertips, my hands, I'm now three, four inches higher, I can go even deeper. If you look at the range of motion, here's my chest going to here, right? That's how much the pec muscle is flexed. If I come to here, now my chest has to go flex even more deeper range of motion. So the muscle's stretching even more on the fingertips, but you don't need to use fingertips, you can use two blocks. So if you don't have strong fingers, just elevate your hands, either put two 45 pound weights, the plates down here, two yoga blocks, books, bricks, whatever you got. I'm gonna go on my fingertips. Now, the reason we're going wide is because there was a study and it's known in the weightlifting community that the best way to build muscle size is when that muscle is the most elongated. So a lot of people think, let's say, doing bicep curls at this point in the curl is how you pump the bicep. Yeah, it is to a degree, but if you wanna actually increase muscle size, it's down here when the muscle is fully elongated and coming to here, that's really working more of the size. Same thing for any muscle group, really. So for pecs, instead of just flying in here, which again, gets you that pump, when you're out here, you're really working that elongated muscle. So we're going to do wide push-ups, Guys, I say it all the time, gotta have good form always. Weak form in push-ups means a weak core. It means you're being lazy. It means you're cheating the workout to make it easier. And if you're cheating the workout to make it easier, then your mentality is out there to cheat. You're a cheater. We don't want that. You don't want to cheat the workout. It's supposed to be hard. Forget the reps. The reps don't matter. No one's watching. It's just you. There's no expectation to do any reps. Wide push-ups on our fingertips. Our hands aren't in front of our head, they're under our shoulders. And from here, we squeeze that belly button in. We're actually activating our core. We're not letting our back droop like this. We're not hunching like this. Nice and strong, we're squeezing our glutes. Our butt is squeezed. This is how we stay flat like a plank all the way down. Again, the goal is to let that chest touch, stretch those pec muscles, and back up. In between the push-ups, if you want to superset with abs, and I say if, but you should, because again, the goal is to do more, because more will get you more. We're on our side, and we're gonna hit obliques. Hip down, hip up. Don't pike at the waist. Don't arch up, good form. Your whole body is nice and flat like this. Hip touches this shoulder. Don't let this shoulder be weak. The shoulder is not against your ear, pushing it away and we're doing obliques. I like to do 12 per side, 10 per side, eight per side, whatever fits your difficulty level. Guys, that was the chest workout. Look at these chest gains. I hope you feel that pump. Hope you're getting those muscle striations that we love. And of course, getting shredded, because that's what we do best. I appreciate you guys. If you got something out of this video, if you liked it, if you're gonna do this workout, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. I roll my eyes every time I say this because I feel like such a YouTuber. Since I'm making content on this platform, I guess I am. I will see you guys on the next one.